Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode here in the Minecraft myth-busting world. Today, we are taking a look at bees and the new blocks added in 1.15. And as we do, we're going to go through a whole bunch of classic myth-busting tests and learn as much about these new features as we can. We're going to kick this off with the classic spawning tests. We're here in the spawning chamber. I've got my pads ready, and there are four new blocks we need to try out. Additionally, we're also going to try out these two when they're full of honey. Very unlikely that will change the result, but it's worth doing. Now, if you haven't seen these tests before, we create a dark room environment, and then hostile mobs will spawn on the block if that is possible. So we have no spawns, and this is no surprise because the honey block isn't a full block on all of its sides, and mobs like flat surfaces to spawn on. The honeycomb block, for example, is a full block, and as you can see here, mobs are perfectly capable of spawning on top of them. Here we can see that mobs are spawning on top of bees' nests, and no surprises here with the beehive. Now here we have bees' nests with the honey level all set to level 5, and I'm not surprised to see there is no difference. And once again, no surprises, a beehive full of honey can have mobs spawning on it. So no surprises there, and probably none in this next classic myth-busting test. We are going to see what blocks the beacon beam can shine through. On the left are all the blocks that it can't, on the right and behind are all the ones that it can, and you can probably predict these. And thanks to the optimizations made to the beacon beams, and them updating instantly, we can quickly do this together. So this is probably exactly what you were expecting, right? And then the honey block is the one block that the beacon beam can go through. Our next classic test is finding out how we instant mine these new four blocks. First of all, the honey block, to no surprise, is like the slime block. It can be instant mined with any tool or even with your fist. The honeycomb block actually has no tool whatsoever. The default mining speed is this, regardless of what tool you use or what enchantments you have. What can speed it up is having the haste effect. So here I have haste 2, and this allows us to mine these blocks a little bit faster, but there is no way to instant mine them. Then we have the beehive. The tool of choice here is the axe to break the beehive faster, and you'll need efficiency 4 to instant mine it. Now if you have efficiency 3, you can instant mine it with haste 1, and efficiency 2 and haste 2 will also instant mine it. Now the bee's nest is like a weaker beehive. It too uses the axe to be broken, but you only need efficiency 1 on a diamond axe to instant mine. And with haste 1, you can also instant mine this without an enchantment on your axe. There is however a catch. When we break the beehive, it actually drops the block. So even though this one is easier to mine, you need silk touch to pick up the bee's nest. Now there is just one other classic myth to do for these new blocks and that is seeing if endermen are able to teleport them. So let's bring some endermen in and immediately we can see that they teleport to the bees hive. Maybe not always successfully though. Things are probably not going to be any different with the bees nest. And I think one of them teleported. Yep, there we go. So they can teleport to that block. Then let's test the honeycomb block. Here we go, I think, yep, look at that, they can teleport to this one. And then what about the honey block, the only one with unique properties, so we may see something surprising here, but probably not is my guess. Yep, they can clearly teleport over to the honey block. Now there was potentially one other test we could conduct to see if Enderman could pick up these blocks, but as you may know, this is now done through JSON files in the game code, so I went and looked it up. And there are no changes between 1.14 and 1.15, so that means Enderman can't pick up any of the new blocks. With those blocks out of the way, it's time to turn our attention to the bee, the one mob that was added in this update. We're going to do the classic test to see if we can use a fishing rod on it, attach a leash to it, or even use a name tag. And now it occurs to me that these pixel arts in front of us are kind of all outdated. In fact, all of the other pixel art things that I've done in the world and now outdated due to the texture changes. Let's not get distracted though. I put in some flowers so that these bees can be at home and not fly away like they tend to do when they've got no flowers to go to. First thing we can see is, yep, the fishing rod works with them. You can use them to move the bees around. We can also leash and drag them. I kind of knew this one already. If you've watched my update videos when they were first added, I think we saw that this was possible. And then last of all, the name tag, and you disappeared into the bee nest. Look at that, you can use a name tag on them and you can even flip them upside down. 
and see their cute little legs. I don't think you'll find what you're looking for down there, my friends. <laughs> but anyway, it's often on this platform that we also go and attempt to put the bees in a boat. And I found a way of doing this, actually. If you just patiently wait here and hold down right click, there we go. Aha! See? The bee can go into the boat. I guess it's got to, like, fly into it. So this would be applicable if you needed to travel across an ocean. You might want to get a bee inside of a boat. And, yep, there you go. So once it collides with it, it goes inside of the boat, and then you can transport it elsewhere. Next classic test is the lightning strike test. Yes, it's unbelievably cruel, but we're going to summon a bee, and then two ticks later, it gets struck by lightning. That looks so horrible. I can't believe we just did that. So basically, it kills them, and I'm thinking, let's get the cruel ones out of the way, and you can make your jokes in the comments down below. Yep, that is not a pretty sight. You can probably hear all those bees buzzing away. As soon as they're in water, they pretty much start taking damage straight away, and then five seconds later, they will be dead. Very unfortunate. So yeah, keep your bees away from water. If they get caught in some, they've only got five seconds to survive. So what about the Vindicator? Does this one get along with the bees? It would appear to be so, but if we rename him to Johnny, he will turn into Johnny the Axe Murderer and even go after the bees. How could you do such a cruel thing, Johnny? It's been cruel so far, but I got a feeling these are going to get along. Yep, the Iron Golem isn't attacking any of them. That is nice to see. I do wonder though, what if they're angry bees? That's a lot of angry bees to be in a cage with, but they ain't going after the Iron Golem. Okay, let's let them out of their cage. I'm in survival, by the way. And yep, yep, they'll come after me. So it could be that when they're angry, they'll only go after a player. Sandstone testing world. This can only mean one thing. The Wither. And to no one's surprise, the Wither is going after the bee. And attacking it. And did it look like the bee was going after the wither? In fact, yes, they're all angered. They're going after the wither together. Oh, I wonder if they can kill it. This is crazy. Okay. Bees versus wither. It's on. Okay, I am actually summoning bees directly next to the wither. And then also killing them if they get out of range. Now, we've learned that the bees drop wither roses. <laughs> this is an absolute storm right here. And the wither is actually taking damage. It might be possible in some strange way. Just probably not possible in vanilla Minecraft, you know, survival Minecraft. We are about to hit the halfway point and things could really change from here. Because now the wither can't fly up. Oh, look at this. I think it's actually going to happen. Definitely not possible in survival Minecraft though, that's for sure. This is surely it now. Oh, there you go. The bees did it. They killed a wither. And look, it dropped a never star. That, my friends, was hilarious. Totally and utterly hilarious. So back over at this testing facility, we check out different potion effects on the mobs. And the common ones are jump boost, levitation, and slow falling. Now, I'll tell you that two of these don't do anything to the bees, but one of them does. Can you guess what it is? Because it is quite amusing. Let's summon in a whole bunch of bees and watch how they just gracefully do nothing but float upwards into the sky. They can't come back down again. Yes, this is the one potion effect that has a big change on the bees, and it is levitation. The testing that I am conducting here, using a teleport to hold the bee in the same location, tells me that it's not going to get angry when a stray or a skeleton shoots at it. And it doesn't get angry at the snow golem either. And if the stray wasn't here, the snow golem wouldn't try to attack the bee. It is the same dealio for the pillager too. So any mob that attacks another with a projectile, if it hits a bee, the bee doesn't get angry at them. Another classic test we conduct is to see how mobs interact with ladders. And with the bee being a flying mob, it's really quite difficult to see what's going on here. But on occasion, they do tend to get stuck in the ladder for a fair amount of time. They can fly away, but they just seem to sit there on the ladder. And that's about the only thing that I've observed. And I've learned nothing useful in this case. And last of all of our tests, I've been trying various different methods to sit a bee on top of the turtle eggs at different heights to see if they can trample it 
And in all instances, I haven't seen this happen at all. So I don't think having bees near your turtle eggs is going to be a problem. Now returning back to where we started this video, there's also two new items and there's just one myth related to this honey bottle over here. It was actually something I missed from my 1.15 quality of life changes video. If you haven't seen that, link in the description and the top right of the video. I currently have the poison effect and if I consume the honey bottle, it actually cures poison. So I no longer have poison status effect. So I thought I'd leave this here for you. It fills three hunger haunches, which is six hunger points, and 2.4 saturation out of a possible 20. So if you consume nine of these in a row, you'll definitely have full saturation. Now I plan on doing more of these myth-busting episodes, so if you have a question, be sure to put them in the comments of this video. That is it from me. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. It supports the series. Thank you for doing that, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye-bye.